We have both. This looks like it's, uh, or is it just me? The stand is the A camera. little shorter in the back yeah, leg. Yeah, I don't know anybody's going to see the difference on the... Uh... It's okay, right? Perfect. Camera level on. Or we could put something in your chair. So that <laughs> well, that would have been a good idea. The volume is not up. Mic is connected. Yes, it is. Can you press that button, that red button over there, please? On the computer. On this one? Yeah. Go live. Oh, it is live already? Namaha. It's there, but I'm not asking. That's good. <laughs> they will all be very entertained. <laughs> okay. oh. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bunatu Sahabir Yankara Vavahai you can edit that part out. A few more things about verses 54 and 55, which explains why the Vijnana Maya is worse off. <laughs> this sense of the Vijnana Maya, we have to see, is a conceptual detail of the mistaken notion of doership attaching to the I notion. The I notion that goes and attaches to the doership is Vijnana Maya. Oh, I have to do so much. Vijnana Maya is always strung out, stressed out, you know, always jumping up and down. Vijnana Maya is the one who needs anti-anxiety medicine. Vijnana Maya is the one who is a panic, you know, panicker. And Vijnana Maya is the one who says, the one who says, I feel limited, I am bound. The one who recognizes I am bound is Vijnana Maya. So it's not all a bad thing. We have to see it in, uh, in terms of what all it is. And then the Vijnanamaya is the one who says, I want to be free. The Vijnanamaya does the action of approaching the teacher based on the desire. What is the desire? <coughs> Moksha desire. Coming from the last life or last several lives. And one may have the question here, where are all these lives coming from? I only had one life <laughs> and where, what has happened to all these lives, where are they coming from? And the answer to that is that if you've had one life as a human being in this or any other, you know, uh, in any other plane of existence, then you have enough karma for endless numbers of life. That's a lot of lives, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It's life after life after life and each life starts with, you know, from, uh, what is that, from the birth cry to the death cry. And in between is also what? Cry. <laughs> so cry, cry, cry all the time. And this is the, the jiva. So from womb to tomb, 
and from tomb to womb the jiva keeps reincarnating through weird birth canals weird birth canals means what various kinds of life forms because there is enough karma to exhaust you know forever so it keeps on exhausting all the time and so therefore what so therefore we have to see they we have to understand this that these karmas have come from just one life where one has flouted dharma one life is enough with free will and so all these karma donkey karma squid karma what else buffalo karma dog karma cat karma waiting to incarnate and so what is the logic for the reincarnation the logic for the reincarnation is the powerful the most powerful desire also known as what the last desire <laughs> it's not necessarily the last desire it's the most powerful desire and what is the most powerful desire the most powerful desire is the one that is carried all the time and what is the desire that is carried all the time the predominant desire something that one cannot let go of and usually i told you that yesterday that the predominant desire is what to heal the core wound of abandonment that is what we talked about at length yesterday that this is the core wound that needs to be healed and that is why this person keeps incarnating again and again in different different forms but not recognizing this desire the desire gets <coughs> morphed into other things like for example the desire may be morphed into i want to belong so next janma what wolf why because it's always in a pack <laughs> a pack of wolves <coughs> or fish because they are always in a school you know everything has a different name school of fish pack of wolves and uh, some you know uh, there is all kinds of names for various groups so this sense of not belonging is mithya mithya means it is a fabrication it is jeeva srishti it is the fabrication of the jeeva which is not willing to admit and understand what that i am already the whole so it's the fabrication of the jeeva due to self ignorance this core wound of abandonment that's what it is and so therefore what therefore one has to one has to see this for what it is and heal it here and now so if moksha is not the predominant desire if the predominant desire is to go places then one is incarnated as a bird yeah keep flying south for every winter <laughs> keep going because why the last life desire was to keep traveling and see places you know and keep flying i want to fly oh lord i want to fly and what does bhagwan say tathastu <laughs> so be it tatha astu astu so be it tatha as you wish just like that so be it as you say so be it and you know when i was small our elders used to say that there are these astu devatas the celestial beings who don't know how to say no mm. they keep saying yes 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 and they are surrounding you and this is how the elders would say so be careful what you wish for not because you won't get it but because you will get it and if that's not what you really want then you are stuck with it mm. yeah so then you say i want to fly next life eagle keeps on looking at everything <laughs> you know it never looks straight it always looks like that <laughs> i don't know why <laughs> hawk something you know i want to keep flying i want a lot of uh, you know birds don't uh, accumulate frequent flyer miles but if they did you know <laughs> there would be a lot of free flights for a lot of people then you know then again 
you know, I want to be calm, I want to have a stress-free life. Next life, hippo. From, go from mud bath to another mud bath. Or water buffalo, you know. This is all just fun, okay? This is not real. <laughs> but we can just imagine, thank God, it's not real. <laughs> So therefore, the desire has to be clarified like butter. A lot of ghee examples since yesterday. And so when you make ghee, first you put the butter. You put all the cubes of butter in a pan and then put it on the stove. Right? What happens? It starts to melt. And as it melts, it makes the world's most horrible noise. Yeah, <laughs> makes a horrid noise. So I can't even replicate it. You have to try it in order to understand it. And then, you know, and it gives off some, it off gases some kind of an old buttery smell, even though the butter is very fresh, meaning all the impurities are being burnt off. And when the impurities are being burnt off, the, the blessed butter is a very noisy butter. Yeah. And that's when you don't go near it. You just keep it in the fire and you go do your, you know, chores. Yeah. Don't leave the house, but around the house. Yeah. I said chores, not errands. Yeah. Then, <laughs> so then, then after a while you miss the noise because you notice it's not there. And then you say, what happened to the noise? And then it's all quiet, a little bubble here and a little bubble bursting there. That's all the noise. And then you go and look at it. And all the impurities of the butter have sunk down. And then the clear ghee has, has quietly risen to the top. You see? And the smell also is wonderful now. There is not that kind of the, the butter off gassing smell at all. And what does this is a very good metaphor for... Doing the same thing with the desires. You put the desires on the fire of knowledge. <laughs> Let it bubble away. Of course it will make a noise. Of course it will be, you'll feel like well, you know, one is close to death. One is not. And uh, that's how it will feel like. And then you put the, and then let all the impurities, the debris, the fallout of the, those desires sink to the bottom and rise to the top what? That clear understanding of this, of what this pursuit is. What is, what is the cause here of the ignorance and how should I go about getting rid of it? All that, that, that Purushartha Nishchaya, the, the decision of how to pursue this knowledge and that this knowledge alone should be pursued, clarifies and rises to the top. And that is how all these desires have to be sifted and seen for what it is. Do you see how important what we studied before is Viveka? What is Viveka? Discrimination. Discrimination, Vairagya, letting go of things we don't need. All that is so crucial and so pertinent to this understanding. This is very, very important to see. And so therefore what? So therefore, this whole thing has to be understood that the Vijnanamaya is the one who has questions about the I. Is the one who says I am ignorant and cries. Is the one who says I have knowledge, I have knowledge. <laughs> you know, like that Greek man who found the principle of, who discovered the principle of buoyancy. He was sitting in the bathtub and then when he sat in the bathtub, the, the amount of, certain amount of water went out. So from that he concluded the connection of the volume of the body, the, the mass of the body displacing the equal volume of water and ran through the streets of Athens <laughs> forgetting a towel. That's what. <laughs> and saying, I have discovered it, I have discovered it. You know? And so this is, this is what, this is Vijnanamaya. The, 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 it, that can sink to the depths of depression and rise to the heights of ecstasy and, and has the power to recognize both the, the not knowing and the knowing. Has the power to pursue the knowledge based on some grace from the past life or working over time. Really, I tell you. Otherwise, one cannot pursue this knowledge. One will run away, really. 
not because it is not pleasant to hear, not because it is not needed, but the restlessness is too much, too much rajas, and too many irons in the fire. One is not able to sit and listen and enjoy. You know, this, it is, this is a cultivated enjoyment. Actually, it is really an uncultivated enjoyment. But one has to as though cultivate it because there are other things clamoring for fulfillment. A morphed idea of moksha is clamoring for fulfillment. What is a morphed idea of moksha? Moksha means moga. What is moga? <laughs> Java. <laughs> <coughs> so, you know, moga, moksha means you know, and people say this, you know, oh, this tastes just like moksha. This is so, this is freedom. And what is this freedom, you know? What is this freedom? Oh, getting rid of something I don't want. But that thing itself, how come you came to acquire it? Oh, that time I wanted it. <laughs> so really, the moksha is not getting rid of some things. It's getting rid of ignorance, self-ignorance. That is what this freedom is. And that is what I want and that is what I am searching for. Has to be very, very, very clear. Otherwise one cannot stay with this. That staying power with the knowledge is a cultivated desire. One cultivates this desire. The desire is already there, but one brings it to the fore. Keeps bringing it to the fore. This is what is needed. So then what? So then this Vijnanamaya goes about reaping the fruits of karma and identifying as the doer and is sitting under a it's like that oil press buffalo you know that buffalo who presses the oil yeah in olden times they did the oil pressing was done by the bulls and the buffaloes cattle so they would tie the bull with a big stone on one side poor thing you know and the other side this another stone and in that stone, grinding stone and then it would go round a circle and the thread would be, the chain would be only this much, it could go round the circumference because it could not go forward, it could not go backward, it could not do anything and if it sat down there would be somebody there to goad it and make it get up and when it went round that grinding stone would go against, rub against another stone and in that they would put sunflower seeds that those small black seeds, what are they? Uh, sesame, sesame, yeah. Sunflower, mustard, sesame oils were made just like that by the, by the bulls going round and round. The Vijnanamaya is like this bull, yeah. Weighed down by samsara. Feels like I cannot go left, I cannot go right, I can't stop. If I stop, somebody is goading me. My own karmas are goading me with that goading stick in my hip, in, in my back. And then what? I can't go fast. If I go fast, I, I, I'll collapse. If I go too slow, the weight, the burden of the stone comes and, you know, feels like it's colliding against me. I can't stop, I can't go on. This is the sad oil pressing bull that is a lot of the Vijnanamaya. Okay? So, is the Vijnanamaya, the next, you know, big question, expensive question is, is the Vijnanamaya Atma? Yes? No? Well, yes, but yes. <laughs> Atma is not Vijnanamaya. So, Vijnanamaya cannot be the Atma for the following reasons. Let us look at them. Fifty-six, I think. Or two oh eight. Ato na nayam paramatma syat. Ato nayam paramatma syat. Vignana maya shabdataha. Vignana maya shabdataha. Vikaritvat. Vikaritvat. Jadatvat cha. Jadatvat cha. 
परिछिन्न हे परिछिन्न हेतु दृश्यो अतः देरफोर अयम आत्मा दिस परमात्मा दिस आत्मा विज्ञानमय शब्द न सैत सो दिस विज्ञानमय कैनाट बी द अल्टिमेट आत्मा द एब्सल्यूट आत्मा and there are some reasonings given shabdatah means that which sounds like which is known as vigyanamaya cannot be paramatma why vikar i mean we already know why because we've been de- <laughs> learning about this for the last three <laughs> classes why means what because it is vikari it is a modification what is it a modification of the modification of the doer the doer and the i notion attaching itself to the doer it's the modification and it is also the modification of the five elements all these reasons and then what jadatvat itself it is inert so when the vigyanamaya says i know i know i know i have discovered a big find scientific principle who has discovered <laughs> it was already there correct the principle was already there but when i say i know i know when the scientist said i know i know i have found it i have found it who has found it you know who is the one that has found it the one that has the capacity of knowing so the vigyanamaya is chida bhasha chida bhasha means it's that reflection or it has a particular upadhi what is upadhi a particular container it has the ability to channel that consciousness it has the ability to channel that consciousness and so the light of this consciousness lights up the thoughts in the vigyanamaya you know like yesterday we talked about the mirror lit sun lit wall so you light up the mirror with the same sunlight and you put it on the sunlit wall you project it on the sunlit wall so how many sources of light are there there is only one sunlight it morphs as the mirror and then it is there as the plain light on the wall we we cannot say writing on the wall we have to say lighting on the wall <laughs> so the lighting on the wall is plain and then on this plain lighting which is the whole wall is just generally lit up and then this particular light of i have discovered this big scientific principle really it's the source of light is one so the discovery doesn't belong to vigyanamaya the discovery is really atma alone and this is what we hear also in the 6th chapter of the bhagavad gita sorry the 10th chapter of the bhagavad gita where bhagwan says if you can sing well it's not you it's me <laughs> it's that that power of you to sing is actually my presence as your voice very beautiful so whatever you can do well it's not you it is me so this is the way to this is a nice way to get get over to transcend the vigyanamaya to stop thinking i am the doer see now in india we have a very good way of talking maybe people don't mean it but if you praise them you say mm-hmm. oh this is uh, you have made this very well you have done a good job and the the, the cultural uh, you know practice is to say it is bhagwan's grace it is the grace of the elders it is the guru's grace that is what we practice people may not mean it people may be inside feeling yeah i did it <laughs> oh you be good they are praising me <laughs> but inside you know regardless of how one feels one says that so at least at the level of speech this is practiced because the speech is also important mm. so first you start acknowledging here then from here it will slowly <laughs> percolate 
you know, to, to a level of understanding within oneself. So therefore what? So therefore we have to understand this very, very clearly is that, you know, whenever anything is, you know, the, the doer is really the, the Atma, not the I notion. Yeah. Doer is Atma. Atma is not the doer. So anything that is done, if I take it upon myself, first I identify as the doer and then what? Then I get affected and then I become what? The done in. First I am the doer, then I am done in by other people's omissions and commissions and their doings and not doings. So therefore we always say to be on the safe side that this is not, you know, this is not me at all. I did not do it. So at the level of the speech, at least it is there. So, but here the Vijnanamaya goes about strutting, thinking that I am the doer. You see, this is the mistake. This is the mistake because one doesn't acknowledge that if I found something because it is because of so much grace operating over time. One is not doing it. It is it is happening. It is just happening and one is in the right place at the right time in the right, you know, manner. That's all it is. And so here the Vijnanamaya is Jada. Jada means what? Inert. Inert. How can it do? How can the insentient do? Tell me. <laughs> what can the insentient do? Nothing. It's only the sentient being is capable of action. And even the action of the dog, cat, etc., who are sentient and trees also, they are programmed beings. That's why they cannot go against the cosmic laws. But the human being goes against the cosmic law. Why? Because there is the free will. Yeah. That is what it is. And so, but the free will is also a gift of Bhagavan. It's not, it's, the, it's that Paramatma alone is in the form of the free will that capacity. But here, when the Vijnanamaya takes upon everything as itself, then what? It is taking you for a big spoof because really it's inert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's shining in borrowed light. Remember the peacock dance and the crow coming into the peacock party, right? Yeah. Shining in borrowed feathers. And then Parichinnatva Hetutaha. Parichinnatva means it is limited. It is limited. Yeah, you could be with her. Yes. It is limited. Limited means what? It's not all pervasive. The Vijnanamaya is lighting up this particular body-mind sense complex, correct? It's not all pervasive at all. And so it is Parichinnatva. It is limited in terms of time, space, everything. And it identifies with at any given time. It, the Vijnanamaya can only say, this body is my body and can identify with only one body-mind-sense complex. Then, the next reason, <coughs> Drishyatvat. Drishyatvat means what? Because it is on account of it being an object. Drishyatvat. Because it is an object. And then, uh, Vyabhicharitvat, it's not the same at all times. Keeps shifting, keeps, it's a, Vijnanamaya is a shifty fellow. Keeps moving, keeps shifting, keeps changing, keeps coming, keeps going. It is not a good thing. And then what? Na anityaha nitya uchyate. And so therefore, please do not make, anityaha means not eternal. Please do not make the mistake, the text says, of Considering the non-eternal as the eternal, you know, yeah. So like when you go to sleep, where is the Vijnanamaya? Gone. So Vyabhichari, it keeps moving and shifting, so it's not really there. So for these reasons, it cannot be the Paramatma and therefore we have to move on. We have to move on to the next place, which is another landmine of mistakes. Yeah, as I told you, Vijnanamaya is me and mine. And then Anandamaya is the what? 
the pleasure the vigyan maya is the doer the anand maya is the pleasure seeker this is the atma in the form of is morphed into a pleasure seeker we will see how that works here now आनंद प्रतिबिंब चुंबित आनंद प्रतिबिंब चुंबित वृत्ति ही वृत्ति तमोजृंभित तमोजृंभित दैट इज वन वर्ड ओके या सो स्यादानंदमय स्यादानंदमय प्रियादिगुणक स्वेष्टाबोदय पुण्यसुभाति आनंदस्व सर्वो नंदति यत्र सर्वो नंदति यत्र साधु तनु भृन साधु नंदु भृन मात्र प्रयत्न विना मात्र प्रयत्न विनया आनंद विना नॉट विनया या विना विना मींस विदाउट या so anandamaya now we are coming to the next place where it's a trap and what is the trap in knowing the i the trap the first was the the last one which we discussed was the sense of doership attachment or identification with the sense of doership and here it's identification with the sense of experiencership bhoktritva buddhi so if i say i am the doer then immediately the whole burden of samsara comes and sits perches on my head correct and as soon as you say i am the experiencer then all the slights and slings and arrows of fortune outrageous or otherwise come and pierce through the ego this is what happens so therefore neither the doer nor the experiencer is i the atma the atma is free of both doership and experiencership and this is what has to be understood because the experiencer is i i am not just the experiencer i am much more than that i am the whole limitless sat chit ananda this is what we are going to um, look at here what this anandamaya is ananda uh, we leave the the verse aside let's just understand what it is first then we'll look at the verse so ananda is for nand to rejoice ah samantat nandayati that which rejoices in all ways completely that is what is the derivation of the word ananda rejoicing in all around completely so this rejoicing when we think about this rejoicing or even the term ananda it's usually translated with a capital b bliss the two it's a capital b so we keep looking for a special experience it's not enough to have ordinary experiences you have to have a special experience and in even coming to the spiritual realm one is seeking a special experience so when i look for one particular experience in the world what happens Huh? You miss something else. Yes, you miss something else. That means it is finite. It is limited. But then, so no matter how special, if it is separate from me, then it is limited by not being me, and I am limited by not being it. So therefore, this so-called bliss, which has you know, which is almost in every pocket book Vedanta. sat chit ananda is translated as existence knowledge and bliss with a capital b never understood <laughs> and that when you go home and read if you pick up a pocket book vedantic text 
and this bliss is driving you crazy what is this bliss how to get this bliss first of all if this is if it is a thing then the first thing i want to know about this thing it's not even this thing it is the thing so the main question is where is it located because if i want to get it i have to know where it is correct so first is it is the thing it's a very special thing and it's i capitalize it because it's not it's different from ice cream bliss sorbet bliss <laughs> you know gulab jamun bliss and uh, rasgulla bliss brownie bliss cake bliss you know sunday bliss monday bliss it's it's completely different it's a separate bliss okay if it's a separate bliss then i have to know where it is number 1 and no, number 2 i uh, i want it correct because i'm a seeker so i i'm a seeker so no, this is a spiritual bliss okay i'm a spiritual seeker so i want this spiritual bliss so the first question is where is it and second question is how do i become one with it because the assumption is that the separation from this bliss is causing anxiety that's why it's called separation anxiety and the separation from the bliss is causing me pain and sorrow and anxiety so therefore i'm away from this bliss and then i have to become one with this bliss yeah anything that comes together falls apart okay this is a law <laughs> this is a cosmic logic yeah this is the logic anything that comes together falls apart yeah viyogantah sanyogah expressed in sanskrit sanyogah or samyogah means the coming together of anything is finite because if two things come together then they don't become really one you know they may be joined for some time and then after that what happens they fall apart viyogah separation so viyogantah sanyogah so sanyogah means the union is how long until the separation <laughs> so samyoga means union viyoga means separation so how long is this is the union until uh, the answer is until the separation comes there is union that is what it is you know everything is like that anything that you see is like that and so therefore this has to be very clearly understood that these two premises that there is some big bliss big b capital bliss waiting for me somewhere number one is is a myth actually i think the word mithya has must have come from word myth yeah so is a myth and the second myth is what that i am away from it it is far away and it is somewhere deep either it's far away outside or somewhere deep buried within me but in any how separated from me and i have to become one with it in either case both these premises are extremely problematic and defy all logic yeah you can be you know you can go you can uh, uh, you cannot go against logic you can go beyond logic that's a different thing that there is a heaven that there is reincarnation there is no way of finding out yes or no so it's a belief but you know whether you don't believe in it or believe in it it's still a belief that's a different thing but here one is uh, told that there is some special thing awaiting which only a few people can get and that it is an experience that is another thing you have to experience the bliss and many times people don't come and sit in classes because they say that in fact somebody said that recently to me that those who know don't talk those who talk <laughs> don't know what this place so and you know and having said that the person proceeded to talk so <laughs> those who talk don't know those who know so don't talk and then what so if you know this you will be quietly experiencing it without sharing it with anybody else <laughs> like you did when you were a child with your lunch box when you had something special to take to school you didn't want anybody to see it so you went far away and quietly enjoyed it by yourself this is what is this you know really this is a non this is arising from severe non understanding yeah 
severe non understanding this is the problem and so therefore what so therefore i have to be extremely careful with these two not to fall into the landmines you know the the, the endless landmines of these two faulty premises now what is the first premise that there is this bliss this ananda the spiritual bliss which is as a result of some kind of either a spiritual study a fruit of the spiritual study or more often seen as a as, as an outcome of some kind of spiritual um, what is that called austerities so this is a this is a big bliss somewhere located either far away from me or within me somewhere deep down i have to dredge it out <laughs> and then what and then the second thing is that i am away from it regardless of where it is located i am away from it number 3 faulty premise number 3 is that it is not to be it's not something that you can share but you can only have it yourself as an experience it has to be experienced so these three things if one believes then one is consigned to being a seeker life after life after life because these are very faulty premises and the more you try to look at them what's going to happen the more you are going to feel away from everything really it's like a what is that called red herring it's taking one off completely off the track this is what it is it's like you throw a few wrong clues and then these wrong clues become the the pursuit for the ones that are clueless <laughs> this is what happens so really speaking the first we are going to take this apart premise by premise the first premise that there is something that is a special experience that as a spiritual sadhaka a seeker i can gain is faulty because if this special experience is somewhere out there then that means it is finite and of course i am already thinking i am finite so finite plus finite even if i become somehow united with it finite plus finite is what finite doubly finite <laughs> yeah it's like a marriage one limited person marries another limited person and then the limitations increase <laughs> that's what happens each one limits the other so then the second premise what was the second premise that somehow i'm away from it and i have to unite with it that is also logically completely without merit because as soon as i say i have to unite with it this union is itself for a short time and then so there is no moksha there because if if it is not already me if it is coming and somehow connecting to me the connection will last only until the disconnection like even the internet <laughs> how long are you connected till you are disconnected that's all it is yeah till a phone call how long you talk on the phone till you cut the phone call that's all it is and the premise number 3 that it is not a matter for talking that it has to be experienced and it's a private experience which cannot be shared with anybody because if you talk you're trying to share it this is also faulty because first of all if the atma is one if that one atma is within everybody in the form of you know the body mind sense complex it's blessing each and every body mind sense complex then whatever that is the, the experience has to be the has to be common it has to be universal it cannot be a personal bliss copyright you know with a little c with a circle <laughs> around it. it cannot be my personal bliss or your personal bliss it is you know it is there for everybody number 3 you know that's the that's the one part of that and then another part is this that this premise that somehow it has to be experienced again makes it limited this is a very common these three are very common errors that one falls into so if i say that it is an experience an experience by definition is finite why because there was a time the experience was not 
before the rise of the experience what was there non experience correct and then there was experience and then the experience will go giving way to what end of the experience again so non ex flanked on both sides by non experience the experience rises and falls no 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 this is a permanent experience <laughs> this also they will say <laughs> premise premise number 4 yeah how can it be a permanent experience if it is permanent it's not an experience if it is permanent it's your nature correct how can it be an experience and ex you know you can, you can say i want to experience something that means what i don't have the experience of it now and then i'm going to experience it and then after that what then i leave that and come back home and then no more there is this experience so the experience means it has to be finite by definition it is finite you cannot have a permanent experience of any kind unless it is your own nature in which case it is not a, a an experience it is you so if it is me if this ananda this this so called bliss whatever we have been talking about if it is really me then where to look for it where do you look for that which is already there <laughs> if it is me it is already there if it is not an experience it is my own nature and if it is my own nature that means i'm never away from it right the i is an experience that is you can call it the you can call the i a permanent experience because it's being experienced all the time there is no time that the i is not are you here now yeah. how about now now yeah. now maybe not now oh now also you are here <laughs> so the i is always now it's always now 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 and so the now is timeless actually the now has no time how much time is now does now come in you know blocks of time no because if now came in blocks of time it would become then it would not be now <laughs> that's why we say that was zen this is dao <laughs> so really speaking the now is free of time and if i am now then i am also what free of time so when i say i am it's a, it's ever fresh it's ever new and never sad are you sad now no no even if you say yes i'll say that's not now that was then <laughs> so the now is free of sorrow sorrow means what a feeling of bondage a notion of bondage is what is called sorrow now is free of sorrow now is free of all kinds of ups and downs now is free of all kinds of pains now is free of limitations and if i and now are one then i am free of limitations oh that's a good thought but how do you know that i and now are one because i said are you here now <laughs> so when when you say i am when are you saying it yesterday no when are you saying it no now so that means what the i am is equal to now and the now is free of pain sorrow and free of being bound by time so the i am being experienced by who by the neighbor by the spouse no by by me correct i am being experienced by me when now which means what all the time <laughs> now means all the time so i am the subject of the experience of i i am the object of the experience of also of the i without being an object without ever being a objectified i am the experience i am the experiencer of i i am the experience to also without really seeing it i know it because why i don't need to see the i in order to be the i because the i that i am talking of is free of being an object 
and is self-revealing, self-evident, meaning I don't need somebody else to come and say, are you, you are here. Correct? When you go and if you're lost in the, if you're looking for some restaurant in the airport or you're lost and you don't know your next gate, they have these maps. You know how to get to different gates. One thing, the first, it, all these maps will have is one red dot. And what does the red dot say? Here. You are here. And then you have to look around what else is there. Oh, coffee shop is here. Okay, coffee shop is behind me. Okay, that's where I am. You, you first get your own bearings, correct? And then you say, okay, where is gate number 75? I have to go to gate number 75. Is it do I turn left or do I turn right? It's all based on what? Being pointed out by the, the map makers. You are here. If you are reading this map, you are here. So in terms of mapping the koshas, <laughs> where is this I? Do you have to tell yourself I am here? Does somebody else have to tell you you are here? No. I myself reveals, I am the revealer of the fact that I am here. Now, and now, and now, and now, for a whole, you know, eon, I can keep saying now, 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 now. The now that never becomes then, that now is I, which is always in the form of that consciousness, ever experienced by I. Because it is revealed by I. The I reveals itself and everything becomes evident to it. Whereas it is not revealed by any other I or not I. <laughs> not I of course cannot reveal the I. I reveals the I. I reveals the not I. The not I also becomes evident to this consciousness I. So when I say I am, what is that feeling? What is, the, what is it that I am trying to say? I am aware that I am. Correct? Yeah. I am means self-awareness is. Correct? And so when I say this fruit is, that means what? Fruit awareness is. So in other words, awareness is. And this awareness is this single, all-pervasive, non-dual, free awareness that is cognized in the form of various objects that is also cognized as the subject but itself this awareness is free of what? Being either subject or object. Isn't this beautiful? This is what is Ananda really. This is what is Ananda. Nothing else. Because if I make it a special experience, then what happens is that one gets completely off track. You are chasing a false scent constantly. It's like chasing a carrot at the end of a stick, you know. Yeah. And the stick is a, what the carrot is a capital bliss. And the stick is there. And the stick is in front. And you keep chasing and never catching it. Because that which doesn't need to be caught is Ananda. Yeah. Because the catcher is Ananda, you know, that which is ever caught and never caught is Ananda. That Ananda is my nature alone, which is all pervasive and without a second in the form of that, the, the cognizer of this I that is free of time and space. And this awareness that is free of being you know, any one thing which, which sustains everything without <coughs> any one thing. We'll stop here. We'll see more tomorrow. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamadachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyona Maha Hari Om Can you please turn that off someone?
it says something, they have to turn it off.